Hello, launch fans, and welcome to today's live webcast of Rocket Lab's fourth electron launch, the Alana 19 mission for NASA. We are broadcasting to you live from Launch Complex 1 on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula and Rocket Lab Mission Control in Auckland. It is Sunday, December 16th, and we are preparing for electron liftoff approximately 16 minutes from now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, As you just saw, we've had successful liftoff of Rocket Lab's Alana 19 mission. This one's for Pickering. The next major milestone we're coming up to is max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is where the forces on the vehicle are at their greatest during launch. Let's stand by for the call. Approaching maximum dynamic pressure. Maximum pressure. H1, propulsion is nominal. Open power pack CO2 bottles. Coming up next are a series of events that take place in quick succession. These are MECO, or main engine cutoff, followed by stage one separation, stage two engine ignition, and then fairing jettison. Minimizing Let's listen take. in. Entering burnout detect mode. Stage one, main engine cutoff. Stage one. And stage two propulsion is not at all. Stage two is stable. Fair and deploy. And that completes MECO, stage, stage one control. separation, second stage ignition, and fairing separation. Electron's second stage is now on its way to orbit. We'll listen in for the call that Electron is orbital at approximately nine minutes into flight. Altitude is 150 kilometers. Our next milestone will be battery hot swap. One of the unique features of Electron is that our Rutherford engine uses electric pumps. 
These pumps are powered by batteries, but once these batteries run flat, they're just dead weight. To overcome this, we perform a hot swap, where we switch from two depleted Extra batteries to a third limited. fully charged one. We then jettison the depleted batteries, and that mass savings allows a more efficient ride to orbit. Look out for the battery jettison occurring at around T plus 7 minutes. Three kilometers per second. Four kilometers per second. Coming up on Hotspot. Swap him. Eject. Statue propulsion nominal. We've had successful hot swap of our batteries and Electron is performing nominally. Five Just to recap, we had successful ignition, stage one burn, and stage separation, and now we're following stage two as it continues to orbit. This burn will continue until around T plus 9 minutes, and then our kick stage will separate. 80 seconds remaining. Copy AFT you saved. Thirty seconds remaining. We have about thirty seconds remaining in the stage two burn. Electron is following a good trajectory and propulsion is nominal. Ten seconds. Close orbital. Stage two engine shut down. Shut down. Transfer orbit appears nominal. The kick stage is a unique final stage of the launch vehicle and provides Electron the capability to precisely inject customer payloads into their final designated orbit, as this graphic explains. Stage two takes the kick stage to an elliptical parking orbit. 
Then the kick stage separates. We leave the second stage in an elliptical orbit with a low perigee, or the lowest point in the orbit. At each perigee, it dips lower and lower into the Earth's atmosphere, finally burning up on re-entry. This means we're not leaving large second stages on orbit for years to create space debris, an important point for us here at Rocket Lab. After a coast phase, the kick stage's Curie engine ignites and circularizes the orbit. Once the kick stage has deployed all payloads, the Curie engine has the ability to reignite and perform a deorbit maneuver, enabling it to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up, leaving nothing in orbit but the satellite payloads. Now we're coming up on payload deploy. This animation simulates the payload deployment sequence, which will see multiple CubeSats deploy from the payload plate. All payloads are attached to Rocket Lab's payload plate, which you see here. The positioning of the CubeSats is kind of like a giant game of Tetris, where we need to keep the plate balanced, but also ensure each satellite has a clear path for deployment. It's also important to calculate the best order and timing to release the CubeSats. We can't just deploy all of them at once, as we need to provide enough spacing between each satellite in the orbit. Let's watch the rest of the simulated deployment. And there you have it, the payload deploy sequence has finished and the mission is complete.